Now, a petition has been lodged at the Scottish Parliament which calls for a change in the law around religious observance in schools. Rather than assume children will attend a school church service or religious assembly, the Scottish Secular Society say parents should be opting in rather than being forced to opt out. When parent Mark Gordon opted to take his daughter out of religious observance, he says there was no provision made for his child. The head teacher looked at me as if there was something wrong, you know, and it turned out that my child is the only child opted out. Uh, there doesn't seem to be provision for an alternative. And I guess that's why she's left in the school office with the secretary to, to colour in or read books while, uh, while the other children are praying. Well, joining us now are Caroline Lynch, the Chair of the Secular Scotland, Sandy Fraser, Convener of the Church of Scotland's Education Committee, and Ken Coulter, a religious and moral education teacher and former Scottish Government Advisor on religious observance in schools. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this evening. Uh, Caroline, why are you wanting to take this action? Well, this is the result of about six months' work um, within the Scottish Secular Society. It's the most commonly complained about issue that we have from members and from people who are actually contacting us for help. And what we found through talking to our members through personal experience is that there is massive variation in religious observance in schools in Scotland. The law itself is extremely flexible and it's, it's designed to be flexible so that it can adapt to the needs of the communities that the schools are based in. Unfortunately, that flexibility also allows for abuses of the law. And so we're finding everything from children being terrorised with inappropriate stories uh, through to young earth creationism creeping into schools, through to um, prayer resources being used for faith healings. And a lot of the time this is being done without parental knowledge or consent. Now, the default position at the moment is that all children take part in religious observance unless they are opted out by the parents but the parents are quite often not told. 40% of parents never find out that they have the right to withdraw. And often when the right to withdraw is exercised by the parents, they are initially persuaded not to opt out. I was told my son could be bullied if I opted him out. Mm -hmm. And then when they do opt out, there's, there's no provision for them. We have stories of children being made to sharpen pencils until their hands blister, okay. being told to, to clean rooms. And this is not a suitable, meaningful alternative as is required by the law. Sandy Fraser, are you concerned by what you're hearing there? I, I think <coughs> Caroline's painting a much bleaker picture than it actually is. We in the Church of Scotland have worked very hard um, to, to make sure that religious observance is a meaningful experience for the whole school community so that everybody can take part. People of faith, people of no faith um, and really the, the, the Minister has said, uh, for education, has said that we could use the, the phrase time for reflection and that is more what religious observance in schools is now. Time for reflection where children can reflect on the experiences of life. Um, it's a time when the values and beliefs of the school can be explored um, and should be a time where Everybody can take part. Nobody should be excluded. OK, well, Ken, what actually happens in schools just now? OK, I think I maybe want to paint a wee bit more of the background, which is that from 2005 to 2007, I was a National Development Officer for Religious Observance in Schools. And since then, the language has changed, as Sandy has said. We're now, now talking about time for reflection. And the most recent guidance has been in 2011 that that's appropriate term to be used. Now, when I was working nationally, we brought together an advisory group for what was then called Religious Observance in Scottish Education. And it was probably the biggest advisory group in the history of Scotland, maybe of advisory groups anywhere, because we brought together humanists and secularists, we brought together people of different faiths, people to, of, uh, from education and from teaching unions and head teachers and so on. And we were there together from very different backgrounds with a real passion that this mattered in Scottish education. Therefore, we debated the issues and we looked at what should be done and we produced exemplars and guidance of how things should be developed. It was a very exciting time. Now, since then, in Glasgow University, we've developed a module to develop this. So that's just part of the background. But what I pick up on is the passion, which these colleagues here are sharing as well, that we want the best for Scottish pupils, the best for our children. 
And I'm an RME teacher, and RME is slightly different from religious observance. So, so let's be clear, Matt. Yeah. Can you clarify that for me? <clears throat> what, what's the difference between religious education and religious observance? If you could just simply yeah. tell me that. Religious and moral education is learning about faith, how other people see the world, and learning from faith about how I see the world. Religious observance, or now time for reflection, are community events in the school where the school takes time out from the curriculum to consider uh, important issues as a school community. Oh. A good example of that would be one that I was involved in, where recently six-year pupils had visited Auschwitz. Mm. They came back from Auschwitz, they did a presentation which we intermingled with considering a contemporary song, Are We Human or Are We Dancers? Mm. And at the end of that, there was the question, well, what does it mean to be human? And also brought in were voices from people of faith, Jewish faith, who still believe despite the horrors that they'd witnessed. And I think if we want the best for Scottish education, we all need to be involved in this. OK, well, Callum, <clears throat> what, yeah. where's, the, where's the problem in that? There is no problem with that, but that is not what's happening on the ground on the whole. Um, the, the instance that you just described, that is absolutely worthwhile, and that's not something that I would raise issue with. But what we are being told, the law says that it has religious observance has to be non-confessional, non-denominational mm -hmm. and respect the beliefs of everyone, regardless of what their belief background yeah. is. More commonly, it's singing hymns, doing the Lord's Prayer and that kind of thing. There's still very much that traditional approach. And, and Sandy, is that not I, I, I would have to take issue with you yes. there that, um, <laughs> no, that is not what is happening on the ground. I mean, I'm going into schools and um, it, it, religious observance, time for reflection is definitely not confessional at all. Well, and it's not with respect, hymns. there's I mean, only so many schools that you can go yeah, into. We but, have a lot of members right across the country yeah, and uh, what we're being told is, is quite horrifying in I've some cases. I've got a lot of chaplains right throughout the country and we hold chaplains conferences on uh, a regular basis and there's one coming up on religious observance itself. Um, and there was a time when I was at school, um, assembly, was Granted, yes. singing hymns and yes. that sort of thing. That is not religious observance now in the vast majority of cases. Okay, look, we are working very hard with Glasgow University and we, we subsidise the course at Glasgow University uh -huh. so that there is good religious observance in schools. Ken, how can, we're hearing two different tales there. How can, yes. how, how can we <clears throat> make sure that there isn't that different experience? Yes, I think, I mean, I'm an RME teacher, I'm also a Christian as well, yes. and I'm happy to have the secular society as an ally rather than an enemy. Absolutely. Because I think if there are examples where uh, religious observance, time for reflection, is not meeting the guidance that the government has issued, mm. then we need to hear about that. And we need to, in a non-adversarial way, support schools in moving towards meeting the guidance. And it is inspectable by the inspectors in school. So, but but you know, Callum, yeah, would, 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 would you want religion out of school completely? No, not at all. I mean, religion is a large part of very, very many people's lives. And religion informs people's views on the world and how they interact with the world. It's essential that our children learn about religion so that they can function within that world effectively, regardless of what their personal faith stance is. So we absolutely support religious and moral education. Religious observance is, is a different issue, though, because it very much impinges on your personal beliefs. And we believe that everyone has the right to choose their own religion, their own faith, and follow it as they see fit. And, and given that, Sandy, then, should that not be something for the home and kept out of schools altogether? No, I don't believe so, because under Curriculum for Excellence, um, as you look at the whole um, a curriculum for excellence. I mean, religious observance, time for reflection is in there. Yes. And I, I would hope, Caroline, that if a head teacher found that that was going on at a religious observance assembly, mm -hmm. she would be um, speaking to the chaplain or whoever was taking it, mm -hmm. because chaplains are only in school at the invitation of the head yes, teacher. Absolutely. And at any point, a head teacher could turn around and say, Well, actually, I think you're going too far. 
Yeah. And well, to give you very briefly, then, Caroline, sorry, time is running away from us. Very briefly, what do you want to come out of this ultimately? Uh, we want it to basically be so that parents have the power. We want parents to be informed of what religious observance is happening, when, how often, who's delivering it, what the children are being told. We want them to be told that it's their choice whether their children attend this. Um, and if they exercise the right to withdraw, they want, we want there to be a suitable, meaningful alternative. And very, very briefly, Ken, is that going to happen? Can that happen? I think opt out is a better way to go. But I actually think the whole debate is distraction and we need to work together to provide the best for our pupils in Scottish schools. OK, Ken, Caroline, Sandy, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.